Miracy. Hi, I'm Mishi, one of the producers here at Miracy FM Podcast Network. As we do every year, team members choose a favorite episode to end the year. I chose a tale that sparkles with the magic of unlikely friendships that triumph against the odds. In the enchanted tales that Lisa shared with us in 2023, the mice and the elephant emerged as a beacon of courage and collaboration. It's a story where the smallest creatures wield the greatest powers, and which reminds us that we need powerful and sometimes unlikely collaborations to help us with our business journey. Enjoy the episode, happy holidays, and see you next year. Once upon a time, there was a colony of mice who feared the elephants. Whenever the elephants walked through the mice's land with their enormous feet, many mice were harmed. One day, the mouse king went to the king of the elephants and said, If you spare our lives, we will help you in a time of need. The elephant king agreed. Hi, I'm Lisa Bloom, the story coach and you're listening to Once Upon a Business. In each episode, we explore a story, a fairy tale, folk tale, or traditional story, so that we can discover the amazing lessons relevant for business and for entrepreneurs. The Elephant King ordered the elephants to be careful, never to step on a single mouse. From that day forth, the elephants paid attention and lifted their huge legs carefully, never harming their tiny friends. If they entered the land of the mice, they lifted their trunks and trumpeted a warning. We are walking, we are walking. One day, elephant trappers came to the forest. They were seeking many elephants for the human king's soldiers to ride into battle. Day by day, more and more elephants were caught in great rope traps. The elephant king was very sad. Then he remembered the promise of the mice and sent for his little friend, the Mouse King. The King of the Mice arrived and listened to the elephant's story. Then the Mouse King called all the mice together. Thousands and thousands of mice gathered to discuss how they might help the elephants. No one had forgotten how their huge friends had spared their lives. One clever mouse made a plan. All the mice rejoiced. The mice formed into little groups. Each group gnawed the ropes of a single trap with their tiny, sharp teeth. By morning, all the elephants were freed. Frustrated, the trappers left the forest. The elephant king was grateful. He lifted the little mouse on his back and decreed that from that day forth, the elephants and the mice would be the best of friends. And to this day, that is the truth. The elephants and the mice are still good friends. This is a tale from India, adapted by Laura Sims. If you've ever had a dog, you know that friendship exists between animals and people. But I particularly love the many traditional tales that talk about the friendship between different animals. In this story, there's a play on the physical size of these two animals, the elephant and the mouse, and the unlikely idea that they would have anything in common or any reason to be friends. Mouse symbolism is centered on the idea of having the ability to accomplish anything in life, regardless of your size, and they are adaptable creatures. In Native American mythology, mice are viewed as courageous and persistent. And then there's the elephant, an animal like no other, possessing great strength yet considered a gentle giant who carries the wisdom and intelligence of the ages. Elephants represent many things. They're symbols of luck and prosperity, but they're also powerful beings that use their mighty strength to remove obstacles and negative forces. They also represent wisdom, long life, memory, and vitality. They've long been considered among the most intelligent animals on earth. It's no wonder why these two animals work so well together in the story. Wisdom and resourcefulness are great companions. This story speaks to partnership, to collaboration, and the idea that everyone has their own value to bring to a situation. This is a crucial awareness in business. It's hard to go it alone. 
Running a business is a lot of work, and it requires different skills and qualities to solve all kinds of problems. Like the elephant and the mouse, it's worth considering having partners for specific projects where different perspectives and talents are hugely valuable. It reminds me of an insight from the book Own It, The Power of Women at Work by Sally Krawcheck. She talks about a widely dismissed perspective about the stock market crash in 2008. She said that the financial services industry suffered from too much complacency, from too much confidence in their understanding of the business and the markets, from too much group think, which could simply be too many people who think alike because they are alike. She claims that the arrogance and group think would have been vastly different if there were women and other diverse populations on the trading floors, in management, and among the financial advisors, rather than more than 90% of the white men who ran the show. Diversity is not just the right thing to do, it's actually critical in business. This has been proven again and again. When we have different perspectives and different experiences to pull from, we do things better. And as with the elephant and the mouse, size really does not matter. I see this in the joint venture world, that people with a massive following are not always the best partners. It's more important to have partnerships with people who hold the same values. I've been fortunate enough to partner with many people over the years as I build my business. Many times, I was the mouse and worried about how I could find ways to add value that would have some impact for the other person in the partnership. Over time, I realized that support can look different in different situations. I remember partnering with someone who had a huge following, and mine was tiny back then. After I had pretty unsuccessfully promoted their event to my community, we got on a feedback call. I commented on what I had noticed in their webinar relating to a story they told. I had some suggestions. The partner was thrilled, and I offered to give more support relating to another event they were doing. Not only had I found a way to add value to the partner, but he was also enthusiastic about helping me out next time I needed support. At the end of the day, there's always a way to be a good friend and a good partner, no matter how different you seem to be. I like this lesson from the story. It helps me believe in a more benevolent business world and a more kind and thoughtful world in general. I'm Lisa Bloom, and you've been listening to Once Upon a Business. You can find out more about me at story-coach.com. That's story-coach.com. Once Upon a Business is part of the Miracy FM podcast network, which also includes such shows as Making It and Course Lab. This episode of Once Upon a Business was produced by Cynthia Lam. Mishi Lance and Jeff Govertson assembled the episode. Danny Inney is our executive producer. Post-production was by Post Office Sound. To catch the episodes that are coming up on Once Upon a Business, please follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you're listening right now. And if you like the show, please leave us a starred review. It really does help us out. Thank you. We'll see you next time.